Right. So, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Gareth Bazant. I head up the Sage Intact Operations at Solutions for Accounting. I think I've met certainly a few of you, most of you, before. So, it's, it's nice to talk to you again. And those that are meeting for the first time, it's nice to meet you for the first time. Sage Intact is um, it's a new product to the UK. Uh, but it's not a new product, and, and that's a very important differentiation. It's been around for some 20, 22 years now, probably coming up to. Um, it was developed and born in the States, um, and it's got a, a large client base in the States. It was purchased or acquired by Sage back in 2017, and what Sage did was it embarked on this sort of journey of denationalizing the product from the US and then localizing it to certain areas in the in the world uh, and it's kind of a an ongoing rollout plan to roll out to more and more countries uh, as it goes on currently it's been released in Australia in the UK uh, Canada and in South Africa uh, as well as obviously the US uh, and that's when I say released I mean it's it's generally uh, on general sort of availability in those countries the any tax solutions or submissions such as MTD in the UK that's all covered within the core product you don't need any bridging software or add-on software or anything to achieve that um, and, and it covers all of, all the boxes for you know those specific regions so that arrived in the UK back in November of last year uh, that's when the, the release came out with all of that MTD compliance uh, and, and VAT calculation um, functionality within the core product. OK, so that's where everyone thinks it's new to the UK because it's only arrived in the last year or so. But uh, it's proved very popular. It's been very well adopted. Um, there are in the region about just under 50 sites now using Intact um, in the UK since since launch in November. There are other companies that have used Intact in the UK for many years. Uh, and once we get into the product demo and I talk about the way some of the systems work, you'll be able to see how that's possible and how people have been using it. Uh, but it's a very scalable uh, product that can be used in, in loads of different uh, regions, loads of different jurisdictions, and there's a great deal of, of functionality around um, centralizing some information, but then segregating other information to make sure that that all works, which hopefully we'll see in a short while. Before we get into actually looking at the product, I did just want to go through a, a, a few key points about what Intact is um, and how it might differ from perhaps accounting products that you've um, you've used in the past. So the first first thing to say is a true cloud product. Now, what that means is that it's stored on servers that you never see, never touch, never have anything to do with. You access it through uh, a browser, so Chrome, Firefox, Edge, Internet Explorer, Safari as well if you're a Mac user. Uh, very similar to probably a lot of systems that you're used to these days. It's all done through the browser. There's no software that you download and install on your computer or anything like that. And it's been like that from, from the point it was created. So we said from the first line of code being written, it was designed to be this true cloud product. There's a single code base which is um, basically podded into different regions, but effectively all of the base code is the same, whether you're in the US region, where obviously you've got servers and data centers in the US, whether in the UK, where we've got data centers in, uh, they're actually in Ireland, so in the, in the EU, it's running on the same code base. Now that's really important when you consider the, the schedule for updates that, that Intact adopts, and they actually have four updates a year. So on the, I believe it's the third Friday of the first month of the, or second month of the quarter. So it's um, the last one was August. We got one in November. Is the last one of this year. But every three months, there's a, a new release. The product comes out, and that's released to everybody at the same time. Uh, time differences aside for the different different regions, but effectively on the same day, everyone gets access to that new new software. On average, there's about fifty new features per release and a lot of those actually come from feedback from clients telling intact what it is they want to see in the product what they want the product to do and what they need the product to do the first no the first release of the uk november last year this is one of my favorite facts about intact there was more new lines of code in that release 
than there were lines of code in the first release of Intact that 20 plus years ago. So there really is a, a constant ongoing development of the system, um, not just as they move it around these different regions in the world, but as they actually put in new functionality that the customers are asking for, again, from all those different regions. It works on a, a best of breed approach rather than a suited approach. Now, what that means is Intact is a financial management system. Everything that Intact does is focusing on that being a good financial management system, being the best financial management system out there. It doesn't do things like CRM. What it does do is rely on integrations to other best of breed solutions. So we mentioned CRM. Salesforce is that best of breed CRM product. Uh, it focuses on being a CRM product. That's what it does very well. Yes, you can put add-ons into the product and modify bits of the product, but fundamentally, that is what it's there to do. Intact connects to something like Salesforce through an integration. Um, and that's what we said, the ease of integration to other solutions. There's a very open, very accessible API for Intact. It's designed to be plugged into these other best of breed solutions. They actually have their own integration with Salesforce. It's the only integration that Intact have written and maintained themselves, um, such as the, the close relationship between Intact and Salesforce. But there are a whole host of other integrations out there into other products and, and our dev team for example have written some integrations um customers write their own integrations uh, a couple of our customers have done that uh, with, with our dev team backing them up and then obviously you've got the likes of nexonia who is a, uh, an expense management solution they've written their own integration into intact because they have a, a lot of mutual customers so you can use their system for doing what their system is really good at. And then the integration happens in the background to move all that information over to your financial platform. And that's a very common and, and very well adopted process with Intact. Intact is a dimensional accounting system. So a lot of on-premise type solutions work on this basis of having a nominal account and then a department and then a cost center. And when you're coding information into the system, you are effectively putting the, the costs or, or um, revenue or whatever it might be into a combination of nominal account, cost center and department. It's almost like the combination of the three makes its own sub account. And your whole system is effectively built up by a massive list of accounts, which are all a unique combination of nominal code, cost center and department. Intact works very differently to that. It actually tags the information using dimensional tags, um, which is, is metadata, it's data about data. And the way I generally explain it is it's a bit like having um, all your data in an Excel spreadsheet and you'd have one column called customers. And if you wanted to look at all the transactions relating to one customer, you would do a filter on that column and say, just show me the transactions or the rows in this spreadsheet where the customer is customer A. Intact basically does that to an extreme level across the whole product. So if you want to look at transactions, you can filter out on all these different dimensions and say, just show me the transactions where the general ledger code equals this, the customer equals that, the product equals this, the product line equals that, and then any number technically of dimensions you want to put into the system, you can use to then slice your data up however you want to, rather than having this idea of bucketing the information into different places uh, right from the get-go which is what these sort of flatter accounting or, or tiered accounting systems do. The, the dream and the, uh, the intention of Aaron Harris, who's now CTO of Sage, uh, one of the original founders of Intact, as we say, 20 plus years ago, was to make a financial system which operates in real time. So you're not always looking back at last month's figures. What you're looking at is that that real time snapshot, where are we right now, this very second, this very day, how are we performing against our um, our metrics, our verticals, um, with a, a, and obviously allowing for better decision making. So again, that's been embedded into the thinking of the product from, from day one. One of Aaron's other 
dreams was to eliminate Excel spreadsheets from the whole system um, and the whole process. But he's over the years, I think, realized that that's never going to happen with accountants. Um, so now embraces Excel and, and spreadsheets a little bit more. But certainly this real time decision making functionality and, and seeing everything um, in real time and not having this long sort of period closed process to go through is, is very much a key point of the product. As we've said, it's a a modern user interface through a web browser that's obviously constantly updated and refreshed and refined on how that looks and how that feels very similar to the way that the likes of salesforce have done over the years when they moved from their classic experience to their lightning experience um intact actually went through a similar process where they had their, their old page layouts and they've they've refreshed it modernized it and now there's one or two places where you have to use the old layouts so that's more in the development side of things um the the day-to-day -day functionality and use is all based on a on a much fresher uh, feel and look okay so Intact as a product, as we said, is its best of breed product. First and foremost, it's a financial management system. That's what it's good at. That's the only thing it really wants to do. That said, there are about 50 to 60 different um, SKUs on, on, say, the price list that we need to go through, um, different bits of functionality and different modules which are available in that core product. Uh, to make the, the product work for different industries and different sectors. On the screen, you can see we've got the core financials, which is what you'd expect, general ledger, accounts payable, accounts receivable, cash, um, order management, that's your sales order processing, purchase management, your purchase order processing, reports and dashboards is, is what you want to see at the end of it, of course, and collaborate is is actually like chatter from Salesforce, in fact, it is chatter from Salesforce, uh, we'll go into the technicalities of, of why it is, but um, that basically gives you the ability to tag um, or have a conversation about any transaction or any piece of information within the system with your your colleagues. So you can all, almost have a chat thread mentioning different colleagues. Can you double check this figure? We need to change this figure because of X, Y, Z. Um, put in screenshots or documentation to prove that. Particularly useful if you, for example, change a budget figure at the last minute um, and you have a conversation with the manager of that department and say, we need to change this budget because of whatever reason that all goes into chatter that sits then with that budget until the end of time so in 12 months time when you look at the figures and go why did we change that figure you've got that information there as part of collaborate to uh, to refer back to there's a huge number as we said of additional modules uh, and they can range from anything from fixed assets or inventory management so stock control through to a, a very complex um, and a very powerful project accounting and contract management um, system, which does an awful lot around managing your billing schedules, what needs to go on to certain invoices for, for certain people in um, certain contracts or certain projects, and really marries everything up together from from what you're being fed in from time and expense management systems, be that the, the core module in the system, or be that um, a marketplace partner or an integration into, into the system. And then driving that billing, basically automating as much as can possibly be automated to make the, the financial team's jobs as, as easy and straightforward as possible, freeing them up to do the, the forward thinking and the, um, the real time analysis of data rather than always backtracking and keeping up to date with everything. I mentioned the marketplace uh, just then, and the marketplace is another key feature um, of Intact. As we've said, it's this best of breed approach. It's this idea that Intact is your, your central cog to your engine, really. That's the financial management system. That's where all the data ultimately needs to end up for you to do your reporting. But where that data comes from and where people are doing their day-to-day -day operations might be in different systems. Integrations can be written for your own bespoke systems by your own um, development teams or by our development team. Or if you've got a, a product which is sort of a more mainstream adopted product that integrates to Intact, there's likely to be uh, an integration already written for you and that is normally written by the vendor themselves so for example here we've got use use is a an ap automation system so captures your um 
purchase invoices, uses OCR um, and document recognition processes to pull all the information out, populate that into their system, which then integrates and feeds that information over to Intact with you know, PDFs of the invoices, et cetera. Um, it's got approval processes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, within use um, above and beyond what you've already got intact. But because a lot of people use use and they use intact, use have written that integration uh, between the two programs. Okay. That's enough of my intro, I would suggest. So I'm now going to flick my screen over to, there we go, uh, to show you Intact. And I don't know if any of you have, have seen Intact before, but, uh, but this is it. As we said, we're in a web browser. I've logged in through the internet um, from home. There's no need to be connected to VPNs. There's no need to be downloading software and worrying about speed of internet connection to servers. It's, it's all designed to be used through a web browser. So, let's go into load up a dashboard here to show you. What we like to do really is start from the end <laughs> and then work backwards, if you like. Everything that you put into a financial management system, ultimately you want to be able to report out on the reason you're putting all this information in there is so that you can then pick up some key metrics um, and see how your company is performing see how how you can make decisions around what uh, what you need to do and the best way to my mind to see that is graphically through things like dashboards now what we've got here is is just a, a snapshot of, of what you can achieve um, with these dashboards graphs kpi cards showing performance you can set you know a, a green arrow is good when it goes up or a red arrow is bad when it goes down smiley face sad face thumbs up thumbs down you can do all that sort of thing with those kpi cards and also looking back at the actual figure behind it so what this is saying is that we've got an amount of revenue and services which is actually 102 percent above budget um, and total revenue here, 101% above budget. Chargeability, you can see it's actually gone down one versus prior month. It, it just gives you snapshots of information that you can then perhaps drill into in further detail. Obviously, we've carved up things like operating expenses by department, split it out by department. And if I wanted to look at that department in more information, I can drill into it. As with most, I'd say, interfaces on, on browsers, if it's blue, and it puts a little finger up when you uh, when you hover over it, it's drillable and exactly the same with intact. So you can actually drill all the way down to the end transactions if you need to. So this has all gone all the way back to the journal uh, that it relates to. Hugely useful when you're um, obviously looking at those dashboards, but then want to drill into, into further information. Uh, a few examples of other, other types of graphs in there. I mentioned dimensionality and uh, how you can carve the data up and that's really apparent in let's go for the dimensional insights dashboard in this dashboard here now what we've got across the top here are a number of filters which will apply to the entire content of the dashboard now it's showing very little data at the moment because it's a, a demo system set up from 20 of the data is all in 2018 basically so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to set my as of date so run the reports run the dashboards as if it was that date and that's going to give me a lot more information he says confidently there we go again you've got a few more examples here of um, conditional formatting if it's above or below a certain level, make it a different colour. And I suspect this is going to say it's red because it's less than zero. That's a guess. Yeah, it will be. I can also then filter out on, these are different dimensions. Locations is pretty self-explanatory. Classes is just a dimension that it's a free dimension effectively. And on this data, they've used it to, to define different product lines and then customers as you expect is your customers so if i wanted to look at this data i'm in the usa one entity which we'll come back to in a second if i wanted to look at this data just for my service line one information any data then that's tagged as service line one is going to be included everything else isn't 
And if you'd noticed the figures beforehand, you would have seen that that's pretty much halved because we've done that. We're only looking at the data where that, that tag is, is true. And likewise, if I wanted to um, split it out by different customers, I'm not going to do it because I'd have to luckily pick a customer that's had some services from service line one. But if I wanted to look at different locations, I've got the same functionality there as well. Okay, I'm just going to pop that back to the defaults. And they are very much real time filters that you can use on a, on a dashboard uh, as and when you run it. You can do the same with reports as well. If I wanted to um, run this report, I could chop and change what I'm filtering on uh, my as of date um, and then hard code some filters in or have some filters available at runtime. If you've used Sage 50, Sage 200 report designer, where you've got prompt ticked here, that's where those criteria are going to pop up when you try and run a report. And it says, do you want to define a particular date or a particular department? Uh, you've got the opp opportunity then to, to change that um, at the point that you run the report. So that can be at a report level rather than at a dashboard level. And like I say, you can hard code that in and not have it available as a prompt. So you might say a particular report is only ever going to be for the IT department. So I'll hard code the IT department into that filter. So it's only ever going to look at that one department. Again, these are all drillable because they're blue and they go underlined when you hover over them. And you can get all the way into your financial data from that dashboard. As you see, we've got the entries here with these different dimension tags filled out. So which project is it? Which task is it on that project? Which item does that relate to from a billing point of view? What currents are we working in? And obviously your debits and credits. This is a, a journal entry, clearly. If I wanted to modify one of these reports, in some programs that can be a bit of a, a bit of a challenge but actually with with intact it's really straightforward the, the system's designed for the end users to to write and maintain these reports and these dashboards themselves rather than having to rely on a marketplace partner or rely on a business partner like ourselves to write those reports for you uh, and i'm just going to pop in really quickly and, and show you a little bit of how easy it is to to do that so we're going to take a, a profit and loss report here and just pop in and have a have a quick look at what we've got. So the report writer, it's all designed as you'd expect to be used through the web browser. The concept is that you've got information in your rows and information in your columns. Now your rows is for a PL going to be your account groups. Now account groups are collections of GL accounts ultimately. How you group those together is is up to you you've got a lot of flexibility around that it doesn't have to be in certain ranges like products like sage 50 it doesn't have to use reporting categories like sage 200 you can actually say this this particular account group is a collection of certain accounts and it can be one account 10 accounts 20 accounts 100 accounts in a range not in a range whatever you want to do but ultimately that group then makes up a, a section in your reports and that group can then be part of another group which can be part of another group which can be part of another group and that's how that tiered structure um, gets put into your reports so here we've got our revenue sales group uh, and that's going to be a, a number of gl accounts which are your your revenue accounts for sales and then obviously if you've got revenue against products or revenue against hardware software you're going to put those into their own defined groups all of these are then grouped together into the revenue group, which is a group of groups. And then revenue and cost of revenue are going to be grouped together into your gross profit group. And then your gross profit group and your operating expenses group and perhaps your other income expenses um, and taxes are all grouped together then into your net income or loss group, which is effectively your P&L group. OK, so everything to do with your profit and loss is all grouped together ultimately under this net income group now intact does some of the work for you in creating what's called account categories where you can define a category for um for your gl accounts and then that bridges the gap between your own 
custom GL structure and the out of the box reports. But you don't have to use categories. They're, they're more of a starting point um, than a necessity. Fundamentally, it groups everything together then into these groups. At a group by group level, I can say on this particular report, I want to see just a summary or I want to see the details. I want to show each individual account on that report. I could also expand by a dimension. So I can say, show me everything in that group, but I actually want to see it split out by departments. Now, a good example of that is if we have a look at our payroll expenses. So I want to expand that out by default. And I want to look at, oh, I don't know. In fact, let's just expand the whole lot out. And preview that. Then you can see there, I've now, instead of it being all grouped up as it was before, it's now expanded out and looking at all your different um, accounts underneath those those groups. So if I had a look at my payroll taxes, I could actually expand that out by dimension. So if I wanted to look at my taxes just by department, you can see that it's now split out those figures by the individual departments. It's left the rest of the report as it was, but specifically for that payroll taxes, I've done it by department. OK. Dead quick, dead easy to maintain and change these reports as you go along. Columns are, if, you, if your rows are your accounts, your columns are your financial periods on the on these financial reports so column one is our account names column two is our actual figures looking at the current month to date column three is our budget and then that's looking at a particular budget you can have multiple budgets within the system and then we've got a difference and a variance looking at that budget against the actuals you can create any number of columns in here add another column to the right and what I could say here is I want to look at my actuals current month today, but I actually want to look at last month's figures. So I'll put one prior period in there. And all that's going to do is give me exactly the same information as before, but looking at last month. Month to date, 31st to 12th, month to date, 30th to the 11th. And as you can see, it's just pulling out the figures as it was at that point. Using that prior period rather than setting defined dates in these reports is obviously very useful when you consider we've got this as of date here. So if I move the as of date back to the 30th of November, you're going to see now that our current month is November, our one month prior is October. If I wanted to save that as my report, obviously I can save that, I can duplicate reports and then make my modifications to them and because everything's done by these account groups you can actually have several different PL type reports for different purposes if you've got a particular PL format that the board wants to see you can have one PL for your board if you've got a PL that you want to look at from a, a management account perspective or operational perspective you can have a completely different report layout set up different groupings of accounts even um, obviously showing or expanding contracting different data as you as you go We've already touched on the filters format as you'd expect is just things like size of text um how many columns you want how you want to split it up all done through this browser interface as we say any of those reports can then be used on your dashboards uh, you have to memorize the criteria so if you if you are setting it to be just one department um, or you're setting it to be a specific date you memorize that information and then you can add that component in to your dashboards Give it a second to catch up with the world. There we go. So if I wanted to put in a report, it's a financial report, and I could say uh, financial ratios reports there. If I save that, it's going to pop that component onto the report for us, onto the dashboard for us. There, yeah, so our financial ratios is now there. And obviously I can drag and drop it, move it around. From a starting point of a dashboard, of course, I could define how many columns there's going to be, and then it's just moving it around. 
again, real benefit is you can have one dashboard and then predefined criteria for different uh, users. So if a user has only got access to one, one particular department, they're only ever going to see this dashboard with the information that they're allowed to see. So that that one department, or if they can access two departments, they've got the option of, of looking at the two departments or, or just one department. It means you only have one departmental dashboard to maintain, and then the user's permissions will define what data they see on that dashboard. Really useful if you did want to add another component to the dashboard, like your financial ratios. You do it once, all your departmental managers see that change straight away in their dashboard. Obviously, if you've got separate, separate dashboards per department, you've then got to go in and change X number of, of um, dashboards every time you want to, to make a change to, to that unified view that everyone's seeing. OK. I did say I'll touch on this entities idea, uh, and to do that, I'm going to just pop up to top level. So Intact is structured around this idea that you're potentially going to want to group your different data by different business units or different entities. The easiest way to define that is an entity is, is a business unit in a different locale. So the way this particular environment is set up, top level is your, your top level group um, company. And then underneath that, you've got these different entities. So there's actually, there's two in the US and a holding company. And then you've got an entity in Canada, an entity in the UK, an entity in Australia, an entity in South Africa. Each one of those entities has got its own tax legislation attached to it. So obviously the UK is all going to be in, in sterling as a base currency. It's going to have um, all the tax information in there for for VAT and for MTD, you'll be able to do your, your MTD submissions for just this um, or just any entities that are in the UK without affecting anything else uh, and operate very much at that, that regional level. It's not a completely separate company though, uh, and that's the, the key benefit to, to this, this shared environment setup. There's a lot of information which is shared across those different entities. So we talked about the departments, um, the locations, classes in that free dimension, customers, suppliers, items, they can all be shared across all of your entities. The GL structure is going to be the same across all your entities. You can modify it a little bit. You can create a GL account for just one entity or visible to just one entity that the others can't see or use. But generally speaking, you want to keep that uniform approach across all your different business units. Now, that's hugely powerful as you add new entities. If you opened up an office in, um, I don't know, Singapore, you can very quickly just create a new entity. All of that shared information is already there, already ready to go. And then you can just start using it straight away. You can restrict what is available in different entities. So it's not an all or nothing approach, but it does give you that flexibility, that scope to share information across all your different entities. You've also got multiple base currencies. As we mentioned, the, the UK entity is going to be in sterling, where obviously the US ones are in US dollars, Canadian dollars, Australian dollars, um, and, and RAND for South Africa, of course. But at top level or at a consolidated level, obviously you want to, to pull all of that together into a, a unified base currency. So a consolidation currency and the system has functionality to handle that for you. It will add the figures from one entity to another entity or any number of entities and any number of combinations into a consolidation entity. And it will do the currency conversions for you. The average rates, the spot rates are calculated off oanda.com. Um, and it's going to give you all that, all that information in that one base currency then whilst pulling all the dimensional information in as well. So you've got, instead of just having a one lump figure of, well, that's how much came from that, that entity, that much came from that entity, that much came from that entity, you've still got that drillable function to get all the way back down into that, well, which customer was it that actually paid that money um, on that entity on that day? Multi-currency, as I said, exchange rates come from Oanda, and that's really, really powerful. Um, if anyone's had to maintain the, the currencies themselves um, in some of these other systems manually, where you've got either a, a potentially daily, weekly, monthly process of updating all the exchange rates within your system, Intact is going to do that for you. So if I was to create an invoice,
I'm going to be able to set the transactional currency against that invoice. So obviously the system's picked up that probably EZ services, because they're American, is going to want a, a US dollars invoice. But I'm in the UK entity, so it's obviously the base currency is sterling. The system goes away and picks up an exchange rate from Oanda.com, uh, and that's on a daily daily rate basis. So if I was to change the date of that to say the first day of the month, that would have actually changed if we'd picked an exchange rate that was going to change. But if I change the let's change the currency, that's even more powerful. You see, it's going to pick up that exchange rate for the for the different currency. Okay, that was because I didn't change the exchange rate. There, there we go. That means the system's going to automatically do its um, currency conversions for you. When customers are paying, the system's automatically going to account for your currency gains or losses. And there's also revaluations across your foreign currency bank accounts, um, ARAP, um, debtors report, creditor report. You can um, you can reevaluate that from a currency perspective as well, at end of periods and that sort of thing. And the system will actually create the journals for you as well now to to put in to to reflect those those positions from an unre unrealized currency uh, gain or loss. So again, really powerful piece of system just takes that manual intervention out from the users uh, and automates it. You can obviously overwrite things like the exchange rate if you wanted to, particularly useful if you're doing a bank transfer from one bank account to another where you know what the exchange rate was because the banks told you what exchange rate was used. You could just overwrite the exchange rate as you wish, put that in. That's recorded per transaction, of course. So when you do do um, global consolidation, it's going to be looking at those those real exchange rates that were actually used rather than trying to pick up something like the oanda.com rate. Okay. Other great bits of kit within Intact are around, say, the purchase ordering system. Sales and purchasing, you've got complete control over how you want those transaction workflows to look. It's not a set in stone. You've got a purchase requisition, becomes an order, becomes a goods received note, becomes an invoice. You can chop and change that process however you want, put extra steps in. Define what happens at each of those steps. Uh, define whether it's a, a posting step, whether it's going to affect the inventory. Um, you can convert from one type of transaction to another. So obviously a purchase order can be converted into an invoice or into a receiver. Um, there's approval processes at every step as well, depending on whether you want to approve on value or departmental manager. There's actually seven different approval processes within Intact. They're all slightly different. Um, purchase order processing approvals are probably the most complete gives you the most flexibility for how you want to use it but there are also approval processes around um, purchase invoices and actually approving that they're correct uh, purchase invoice payments so when you're actually paying those invoices somebody has to authorize payments over a certain value is normally the case you can have approvals against journals as well um, approvals against expenses and timesheets there's actually an ongoing piece of work within Intact to centralise all of that approvals and take the best bits from all those seven different processes and put it into one centralised system. Um, so watch this space for that one. But it is, there, there's a lot of functionality around, around approvals and obviously it's all done within the system. You get an email to say this needs approving. You can go in, approve it, decline it, and then obviously the person who's, who's requested that approval is going to be notified. That's all handled within the system almost out of the box as I say you can configure how you want it to work uh, but it's all available functionality there things like time and expenses again you can have employees log into system put their expenses in against um, particular projects put their timesheets in against different tasks in different projects you can define whether those things are billable or not so when it comes to invoicing the customer whether that expense is actually included as an as part of their invoice that they're having to pay for with a say a, a five ten percent uplift as well the system can handle all of that for you uh, there, there's huge amounts of functionality particularly around things like projects and contracts as i mentioned which for time's sake today obviously we've got no chance of, of going through but i just wanted to to give you a a snapshot really of of how it all works and, and how it can can work for you as I say, the, the key thing is the reports, the ease of the reporting, how you can then feed that into dashboards and have that, that real-time view. 
instead of creating a board pack that goes out three weeks after close, you've actually got a dashboard like this one where you're going to say, here's all the key information that these executives want to see. You customize that to how you want it, put the graphs on that you want, and then at any given moment, they can pop in on their web browser or on their iPad on the beach is the, is the common request uh, and see how the company is performing based on those key metrics that they want to see without having to wait for a, a PDF to come through in an email with some, some information on it. You can do the board pack approach if you wish, and you can actually automate that within the system to, to fire that out as an email on a given a given day with the right information in it and the right collection of reports. But certainly the intention is that you, you, you look at everything in real time on the system rather than looking at retrospective reports in a PDF or, or what have you. OK, I didn't really want to go into any more um, detail than that on, on this run. It's very much just to give you a bit of an idea of, of how the product looks and, and the power, of particularly around the reporting. Um, things like the contracts module, projects module. I mean, you, you're talking three hours just to go through a demo of, of one of those um, themselves. There isn't that much that you can potentially do with it. So, um, yeah, I, I wanted to leave it there, really.